Okay, we're going to revisit a topic that we've looked at um, and involving partitioning a segment into two parts, but we're not going to divide it into two equal parts. That word partition, by the way, just means dividing, so if that's confusing you. We're not going to divide it into equal parts. We want to make it so that it's in a ratio. So the first one is going to be a ratio of 4 to 1. And I'm going to encourage you to just try this one. So maybe pause the video if you haven't actually tried it yet and see what you can come up with. And don't think that you have to do a whole bunch of crazy calculations. Just use some common sense and see what you can get from the graph. So obviously connecting right here and making a segment for us to start from. And then we're going to try to make it into a ratio of 4 to 1. So figure out where would that point be. Okay, I'm assuming that you've tried it by now. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple ways that you could have done it. Um, and these, some of these came from suggestions from students of what I saw them do. We have the option of using slope, and I'm assuming that you use slope in some way. So one option is to just literally count my slope and walk my slope as I would in algebra bar class. I go down one and over two. I go down one and over two again. Down one and over two down one and over two. That was four times if you're looking at my stair steps there. That puts me right here at the point one comma zero. And if you look, there's one more stair step left down one and over two. So I literally just went a ratio of four steps to one step going the same amount every time. So that gives me a ratio of four to one at this point right here. Um, but you didn't have to do it that way. Somebody else did this. They actually said, okay, let's look at it as I've got a triangle here, and let's just group those four steps basically together and say we went down four, and we actually went over eight, and then we've got the smaller triangle down one over two. And if you look at the ratio of corresponding sides between those two triangles, you've got four to one, and then you've got 8 to 2, and both of them reduced to that ratio of 4 to 1. So I'm literally turning this into two triangles, and I'm going to propose that if they're similar, the ratios of all the sides would be 4 to 1. So this 4 and 1 aren't necessarily representing lengths, but reduced ratio of whatever those lengths are. Just pause for a minute and ask yourself, do we know for sure those triangles are similar? I threw that out there. Hopefully you're seeing the shortcut angle angle you really could do one of two things because we have these two ratios over here so at this point we could do side angle side with my right angles I'm getting right angles because vertical and horizontal lines on the coordinate plane are always um, perpendicular so I do know that I have right angles then I could use a pair of corresponding angles because I know parallel lines horizontal lines are parallel so I could actually say something like those angles are so either way, yes, we do know the triangles are similar, and that's kind of my thought method. I'm going to throw one other picture out there just for you to contemplate and maybe come back to. And that would be, what if you actually went down here and made two triangles like this or made two triangles here, where you have a big triangle with a small triangle inside? Notice this length changes to 5. And I'm now going to use the ratio, sort of a modified ratio. Instead of part to part, I'm using 5 to 1. Keep that in mind because we might go back to that in the next example. Okay, so I'm moving on to number 2. And something a little bit different is going to happen in number 2. So go ahead, if you haven't taken time to graph it, go ahead and graph it. And then let's see what we can do with this one. So I've got A, and then I've got 8. Okay, so I've got A and B on here, and I want to put P somewhere on here such that the ratio of AP to PC is 2 to 3. So P is going to be somewhere between A and B. And based on this ratio, it's not exactly in the middle, it's somewhere close to the middle, and I'm just going to take a random guess. Okay, I already did, and if you need to pause the video and do this to kind of justify to yourself why we're going to do the rest of the work we're going to do, I already tried counting my slope like I did in the last one and not working out so nice. 
So in this one, we're going to have to do a little more work, and basically we're going to get some non-integer values for our coordinates. So here's what I'm going to propose we do. This is one of many variations of this method that we could do. I'm going to drop down some vertical lines. I like vertical lines because vertical lines I can count. And I'm going to do a horizontal line there, and I'm basically making two right triangles. And as we just said a second ago, the triangles are similar. I can now apply chapter 7 and everything that I know about similar triangles. So I'm going to work over here, and I actually am going to redraw this picture. And I'm going to redraw it off the coordinate graph, and the reason is that I really want to force myself to look at this as a chapter 7 problem and not a coordinate problem, because my brain, whoops, sorry about that, my brain does much better thinking about proportional relationships when I actually have numbers to work with and I'm not on a coordinate graph. So here's what I want us to look at. And we need to find the coordinates of point P. So I essentially need an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Now back to the coordinate graph for a second. x-coordinate of point P would be, let's come straight down here, x-coordinate would be distance from 0, 0, or from my y-axis all the way over. But that would be the same distance as this, would be the same distance as right here. So I'm recognizing that that x-distance is going to be this length right here, I need another color, this length plus this right here, which is really just a length of 2. I know that's 2. So I'm going to try to find this length, this yellow part. I'm going to call that A. I'm just picking a variable. And I don't really want to use X because X could be my general variable in this case. So I'm going to use A there. I'm going to try to find A, and then at the end I'm going to add 2 to it because that will give me the coordinate point for P. So I'm going to put a little note to myself that my answer here for P is going to be 2 plus something for the X value. Okay, and haven't, haven't gotten to the Y value yet. We'll get to that, so let's just leave some room. But I'm going to be adding something, and I'm going to be adding A, whatever A is. So how do I actually find A? Well, Let's see what we know in this problem. I need some numbers to work with. It seems to me they gave me a ratio. So can I do something with this ratio that they gave me of 2 to 3? Well, that ratio was for the segment AP to the segment PB. So it makes sense to me that I could actually call that 2 and that 3. Not necessarily a length, but that is a reduced ratio. So it could be 20 to 30, but that would reduce to 2 to 3. And when I'm talking proportional relationships, I can always reduce some or I can work with the original numbers. So I'm going to have 2 to 3 equals A2. I need one more length. And if you're following triangle proportionality theorem is what I'm thinking right now. All the way I've got parallel lines, and I'm going to start making some ratios. So it'd be nice to use that 2 to 3 ratio equals. Then I would need to put that A with something else. I would need to know what is the length of this part over here. Go back to your coordinate graph for a second. I don't know that we know that, but we do know this length down here. Mm, not going to work. Let's try this color. I know this length down here because I can count that. So, probably shouldn't have highlighted that. Let's get rid of that line. And let's count. So I'm counting from A straight over to B, and I'm getting a distance of 8 for that entire length. So I kind of want to make my ratio A over 8, but then I'm going to be using 2 over 3. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. We absolutely could do that, and we could go with A over 8, but then I'm going to be pairing it with a ratio of 2 to 5. Take a look at your picture. A is my part, 8 is my whole length. I've got to match it with part, whole length. So that's why I'm using a 5. And I wouldn't be using the 3 in that case. Now if I want to use the 3 up here, then 2 to 3, I'm going part to part. I've got to go part to part. And we should at this point be okay with saying that this is 8 minus A for that length. And I could put that in there. 
Two proportions, totally doesn't matter which way you do it. Go ahead, take a minute, solve for A using one of those two proportions. Or try them both if you want. Okay, hopefully you solved, and you should have gotten for your A value using either one of these that A is 16 over 5, which is 3 and 1 fifth, or 3.2. If you'd rather use decimals, three and one fifth if you're using fractions. Any of those will work. Come back to my p-value. I was adding two to it because I want to get the x-coordinate of my p-value. One more time, that's me doing this. I have two right here and I'm adding the yellow was my a. So I'm now going to say that I have p is actually 2 plus 3.2, 5.2 for the x-coordinate. Okay, I know that took some time. We did a lot of thinking right there. Let's use that same thinking to get our y values. The y values will go a little bit quicker. Okay, so I'm using that same triangle. I'm going to slide it over. And I'm going to say now, we're really trying to find this vertical length. I'm going to call it b just for something different. And I'm going to try to find that. Why am I going to try to find that? Because this length here is giving me the extras that I have to go. In the end, I'm going to add 5 because I've got a length of 5 right here from my x-axis up to my triangle. Then I'm going to add this b value. I'm calling that b right there to it to get my total y value to get me to point p. That would be the total height right here. Okay, you got to think of vertical lengths as heights and horizontal distances as x's. So I'm going to try to find b. There's one number I know. I've got 3 over here, and that's really all I need. Everything else is already in my picture. So let's go ahead and add the 3 right here. And I'm always going to start with the variable that I'm trying to solve for. That would be b. And if I'm making a ratio with b, it's going to be b over 3. Match them up. b over 3. Equal. See if you can finish the proportion. I would encourage you to ignore everything down here and use what we have in the top part here because that was my given ratio. Is it going to be 2 over 3 or is it going to be 2 over 5 or either one? Hopefully you're saying that it has to be 2 over 5. This one's a tricky one, but I'm basically comparing small triangle to big triangle. I've got to do the same thing. Small triangle to big triangle. I've got to do that entire length to match with my length 3 right here. Okay, I know I made a mess of my picture right now. Go ahead and solve and check. I got B equals 6 over 5 or 1.2. So taking one of those, recall that we said we were going to add 5. Go back to your coordinate graph if you need to check that. But we were going to add 5 plus that B value. So my final answer is 5 plus 1.2, 6.2 or 6 and 1 fifth if you did fractions. I know that was a lot of work. Double check that that somewhat makes sense with your picture. It's looking pretty good with mine. I know I estimated, but it looks like, yes, I could be about five units over and about six, a little more than six units up at that p-value. Keep in mind that this is a method that is only used or only really necessary when I can't figure it out by some other means. So if you can kind of count it and walk your slope and that works, that's great. You, there's no need to do this unless you want to verify it. This is just a method that helps you get these crazy numbers because there's no way I could get those in my head just by counting. Hopefully this helps. Um, I would encourage you to try a couple more like this. The next one on your worksheet is a little bit different. So be careful when you're reading the problem. Just the, the order of the coordinates is different. So make sure you're really paying attention when you map it out and you kind of initially start the problem. Good luck.